church. Hallelujah. Sing church. Good evening to our online viewers, all those visit, um, viewing us from various platforms tonight. We want to say thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for this opportunity to share God's word um, to you all. I want to say a big thank you to the leadership of this house, Pastor Sam and Pastor Betty. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And God richly bless you and show you himself strong on your behalf. I trust God that tonight we'll have a wonderful service and um, God has always been gracious to us. Can we please bow down our heads? Father, we thank you and we humbly come before you to look into your perfect law of liberty. We ask that tonight, Lord, you will speak to us. You'd reveal your mind to us. You will strengthen us. But above all that, you will strengthen us also, Lord, to strengthen others. And we thank you for the truth of your word that is able to save our souls and is also to able, able to give us a great heritage in Christ Jesus. We are blessed and we're thankful to you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We thank God for tonight. This, um, this, this week is our fasting week and I trust God that we're all spending time to seek his face um, and to know him more, to, to be better than we are by his grace and by his mercies. And I pray that the Holy Spirit to do a great work in us as we seek the face of the Lord. Amen. So this, this month we've been privileged to be looking through the scriptures and our theme has been that we'll, we'll be living sacrifices unto the Lord. Amen. Um, the past few weeks we've had Minister Femi being a blessing to us, Minister Kweku and Minister Eric in that order in the last few weeks, and they've all been tremendously of a blessing to us. Um, tonight, I would do my due diligence to add a little bit to it, and I hope that we would all be blessed. Praise God. Romans 12, 1 to 2, Paul writes to the people of Romans and says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the message of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Um, I've just put something small together, which is titled Lifestyle of Sacrifice. Amen. Um, as, as we've been looking at being living sacrifices unto Christ, unto God, I know that it, it, it en enhances our walk with Christ and causes us to think every day of our life the type of sacrifices we make. Um, whether we make sacrifices um, in our daily walk with Christ, um, family life, whatever we areas, we make sacrifices. But the, the most important thing is that we're living sacrifices unto Christ. So even if we're sacrificing in our workplaces, it's as a result of God empowering us to become even more diligent than we are. Um, tonight, I want us to look at 
a side that I've, I've just been thinking about, and I, I believe that is the Holy Spirit that has placed it upon my heart, that we also have a look at. Paul started by saying, I beseech you therefore by, by my brethren, and he says, by the mercies of God. Um, it, it's, it's plural, it says mercies of God. So it, it could be various types of mercies. And, and he's causing the people of Roman to look at what God has done for them and brought them and where he's brought them. And the, I was trying to figure out what types of mercies, but the mercies of God is so huge. You cannot really look at it. You cannot just kind of like, Condense all in one. And I was, look, I was looking at his, his message for divine self-revelation that God revealed himself unto us before we became who we are and we gained co- for forgiveness through him. And then also his message of deliverance from the things that held us in captive so that our lives can be unique unto him, God Almighty. But as, as we live this life of, of, of self-sacrifice or unto, unto God, I want us to look at two categories, probably even if it's one, that we should not leave behind. Amen. And it's easy for us to, to, be, to be doing our best and carry on so well and also leave some people behind. But um, the, the scriptures reveal something to me that I want us to share. And it's literally concerning our children and loved ones. How can they also become living sacrifices unto God? How can they also put themselves together? They live in a world where things have changed and the pursuit for, for life and, and achievements can be very challenging. Some, some children might, might feel they've been left behind and might end up following other things and go away from the ways of God and even get involved in all sorts, all in the name of fulfilling their lives, dreams, and goals. Some might be as a result of disappointments. They see people married. They're not married. They're at a certain age. Fulfilling people buying houses, people buying cars, people getting new jobs, maybe lacking behind in uni. But then again, we, we can show them the way. And, I, and this is to encourage us, whether we're adults or whether we're young people, that we can also let them that, know that in all the things that you pursue, keep God first. Keep God first. We should try and encourage them to keep God first. And um, I would read a scripture from the book of Job. Job reveals something unto us. And, and sometimes it's just the parental view or the adult person who has um, sons, daughters, nephews, nieces. And you look, you look the, at them and you're thinking, I want you to achieve so much, but I don't want you to slip away from God. And in Job chapter 1 from verse number 5, we, we're going to see an encounter. I, I asked myself last night, and I asked myself, how would Job have handled his children in 2022 with internet, with all sorts happening in our lives today? How can you keep, how can we keep our loved ones so that they would continue to pursue Christ? Hallelujah. Amen. Job 1, verse 1 says, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, and one who feared God and shunned evil. So you, you look at this story, and Job represents most of us. We're, we're, we're seeking God. We're, we're shunning evil. We're trying to live for Christ. Our hearts are after God. We're doing daily our best to, to walk in that which pleases God, repenting, seeking God's face every day. And the Bible says in verse 2 that and seven sons and three daughters were born to him. Also his possessions were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yokes of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large house. So that this man was was the greatest of all the people of the east. So Job is a successful man, awesome family man. He has everything going for him. But above all, Job always had God in mind every day of his life. A man fulfilling so much and never forgetting God and always desiring to please God. Always walking in the, in the light that brings glory to God. Always doing the things that would, would bring honor to Christ. And most of us would represent Job in various areas of our lives. Amen. 
born again, born into the church, doing the things that God has called us to do. But then verse 4 begins to tell us something. It says, and his sons would go and feast in their houses, each on his appointed day, so maybe their birthdays, and would send and, in, um, and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. Verse number five. So it was when the days of the feasting had run their course that Job would send and sanctify them and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. That Job did regularly. Hallelujah. That Job did regularly. The Father and his God meant everything to him. That he always stood looking at his children and wanted them to be in line with Christ. Whether the children knew what Job was doing is wonderful. Whether they understood it is great. Whether they accepted it was another thing. Amen. And I think that we live, we live in a time and a season that most of us can look at our lives and our relationship with God and the pursuit for other things and walking with Christ and ask ourselves if our children are the same. But I'm only bringing this into context so that we can build a solid army. I have my own children with my own challenges. Amen. But I keep trying and doing my best to do what Job did. Constantly reminding them to keep God first in their lives. Amen. So that they would know that there is a God that exists and he's worth worshiping, serving, and walking with. Hallelujah. But they go through all sorts of things. Our children walk out of our sight and we do not know how they get on. Amen. When they are depressed, sometimes we will not even find out. Amen. But how can we be living a, a life of sacrifice to Christ and leaving them behind? Amen. One day we will not be here, but would they carry on as we did? I've always maintained appreciation to my grandma who always pray for him. And, and I, I see the same thing with the way Job handled his children. Amen. And tonight I want us to just begin to focus a little bit that as we pursue following Christ, as we pursue working with Christ, we should not forget to carry on praying for these young ones. We should not forget to carry on seeking the face of God on their behalf. We should not forget that they also would have a future Amen. Our time and season will pass, but they will be around so that they can also carry on with the things that we did for Christ. They might not be perfect now. They might not look holy now. They might not look righteous now. They might not look attractive to God now, but they are also worthy candidates of the kingdom to carry on seeking Christ. Amen. And tonight I feel like encouraging somebody that no matter where your children are, no matter where your sons, your daughters, your nephews, your nieces are, that we can also keep praying for them. We can also keep seeking God on their behalf. That one day they would also become a living sacrifice. They'll be touch bearers to the kingdom. Hallelujah. Their seasons might be challenging, but their God is strong enough to hold them through. Amen. Their temptations might be great, but their God is greater to help them to overcome. Hallelujah. Their losses might be big, but their God is bigger in restoration. Amen. They might see themselves as lacking behind, but their God is a God that can accelerate their progress. They do not need to conform to the world. They do not need to conform to what their friends are doing. They do not need to conform to the things that the enemy speaks into their spirit, but release themselves unto Christ, knowing that God is well able to establish them, ground them, and make get them great men and women of Christ. Hallelujah. That a lifestyle of sacrifice, they can also live it. Amen. A lifestyle of sacrifice, they can also become. The challenges might be many. The thoughts, the things they hear might be many. But as we show them the way, they can also become what God wants them to be. One of the things that keep coming to my heart lately is that we should empower our children to be appreciative to God. Because I believe one thing, when you appreciate someone, when you appreciate what they do for you, you become committed to them. 
the less appreciation you have towards Christ, you would not even find it valuable to live for him. The more appreciative you become to Christ, not for the things that you have, but even for the fact that, that you have a hope in this life makes you more worthy to live for him. Amen. And if our children can constantly be reminded of that, look, this journey has not been easy, but Christ has been faithful. They would come to a point one day when they also be more committed than they are today. They are doing good. We applaud them. They are doing great. We applaud them. But the army of Christ has to grow bigger. So we know that when God calls us one day, there's a generation that would hold the torch for the church. And they would also carry the church forward. Hallelujah. No matter where they are, no matter what they are going through, no matter what they've, been he they've heard, no matter what have been spoken into their minds, they also have a hope that they can become living sacrifices for Christ in the name of Jesus. The second group of people is those that we know, those that are falling by the wayside, those that situations, circumstances, the world has drawn them away from Christ. I believe that they can also become living sacrifices for Christ. In our pursuit to live for Christ, in our pursuit to do the things that God wants us to do, may we not forget that there are others that are struggling also to climb up to that ladder in this life. Amen. Because there are times and seasons that no man knows what you go through. Amen. Some of them might have fallen, some of them might have failed, some of them might have doubted, some of them might have given up. Some of them might not even have been able to reach, to reach any goal in life. And they feel, what is all this about following Christ? Hallelujah. But can we stop praying for them? Paul sent something to Timothy in 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 4. And he said, first of all, then I admonish you and urge that petition, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be offered on behalf of all men. These categories of people are part of all men. Amen. Paul says we should offer prayers for all men. Hallelujah. In our pursuit to live a life worthy for Christ, may we also remind ourselves that there are some people that might have been falling by the way. There are some people that feel weak to carry on. There are some people who want to turn back. Amen. There are some people who might be in a place just like Abraham when God redirected him concerning his life. His nephew Lot and his wife had different things that they were looking after. Amen. But then we can also keep our minds on Christ. We can pray on this one, for these ones, and trust God to redeem them. Hallelujah. In verse 3 of 1 Timothy 2, he says, For such praying is good and right, and it is pleasing and acceptable to God our Savior, who wishes all men to be saved. And increasingly to perceive and recognize and descend and know precisely and correctly the divine truth. Hallelujah. We are seeking God. We want to live for God. But the enemy is also fighting with others somewhere down or behind us that they are struggling to climb up and walk and live for Christ. But I pray that our prayers, as little as they might be, our confessions, as small as they might be, is worth every strength and every fiber of our being to draw these ones back unto Christ. Hallelujah. As we have been redeemed and we are pressing on, these ones are also struggling to come up. I pray tonight that you would have the heart that as you continue to seek God and do the things of God and live for Christ, may we remember our young ones. Amen. We see the things that go out, that go on out. Some of them get into all sorts, from drugs to anything you can think of. Amen. But we were trusting God that these ones, as young as they are, they would form a special army for Christ, unique and vibrant, pursu pursuing the things of God and affecting their city and nations. And those who are falling by the wayside, that once knew Christ but are no more, that God himself would raise them up, would grant them hope, open their eyes, and they would know that Christ is for them. I pray that tonight, even as we are seeking God, may God's heart desire become our heart desire, that we would also stand in for them. It is not too late. There is still hope. Wherever you are, 
maybe a child it might not even be your children your children might be pursuing God like you but what about your nephews what about your nieces what about your friends and I pray that would carry that heart and seek God on their behalf may God grant you that strength that courage to also stand in the gap for this one in, in this ones in Jesus name we pray I trust God that you've been blessed tonight may we continue to live as a living sacrifice may we continue to put our lives on the line for Christ our words our thoughts our imaginations that will bring glory to God as we live may God richly bless you I trust God that you've been empowered tonight in Jesus most precious name we pray amen amen we thank God tonight we want to give it's, it's a good thing to give. It's always a, a, a blessing to have an opportunity to give. It doesn't matter how much. You know, one good thing about giving is that you know that you're going to please God with it. It's always good to, a good thing to give. And tonight we're going to give to God. It might be your tithe. It might be your offering. We'll have information on the screen. Whether you're giving electronically or you've been giving in person, whatever sort of information you need, it's all on the screen. And please give bountifully, give wholeheartedly. And I know that you're giving. God would also show you his goodness every day of your life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be a blessing. We ask that, Lord, tonight, Lord, as we give, may you move in various areas of our lives and may your glory be seen. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. A few announcements for us to cover for the week. Um, this week is a week of fasting and prayer, so we know what we're doing. We're seeking God. We're praying. We're praying tonight, we're praying uh, on Thursday and Friday evenings as well, and seeking God's face, hallelujah. And come Sunday, what an amazing day Sunday is, is dedicated to mothers, Sunday is Mother's Day. Don't forget to appreciate mothers in your life, hallelujah. We all come to church to be a blessing unto God, amen. And then also, don't, don't forget this weekend, the clock goes forward, it goes forward from 12 from 1 a.m. midnight, um, Sunday morning, our time changes. Please don't forget to change your time on your clocks so that we can all be in church on time to bring glory and honor to Christ. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. I pray that your week goes well. May God continue to favor you and be with you and continue living for Christ in Jesus' name. God bless you and have a wonderful evening. Amen.